fighting for an idea. The idea bigger than the country. Without the idea, the country might have remained only a wilderness. Without the country, the idea might have remained only a dream. Over this ocean, 1607, Jamestown. 1620, Plymouth Rock. Here was America, the sea, the sky, the virgin continent. We came in search of freedom, facing unknown dangers rather than bend the knee or bow to tyranny. Out of the native oak and pine, we built a house a church, a watchtower. We cleared a field, and there grew up a colony of free citizens. We carved new states out of the green wilderness, Virginia, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Carolina. Then came the first test in the defense of that liberty. 1775, Lexington. Our leaders spoke our deepest needs. Colonists are, by the law of nature, freeborn, as indeed all men are. It is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government. These are the times that try men's souls. But as for me, give me liberty, or give me death. In the midst of battle, it happened. The idea grew. The idea took form. Something new was expressed by men, a new and revolutionary doctrine, the greatest creative force in human relations. All men are created equal. All men are entitled to the blessings of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's the goal we set for ourselves. Defeat meant hanging. Victory meant a world in which Americans rule themselves. 1777, Valley Forge. We fought and froze, suffered and died. For what? For the future freedom of all Americans. A few of us doubted and despaired. Most of us prayed and endured all. 1781, Yorktown. Now we were a free, independent nation. The new idea had won its first test now to pass it on to future Americans. The Constitution, the sacred charter of we the people, the blood and sweat of we the people, the life, liberty, and happiness of we the people. The people were to rule, not some of the people, not the best people or the worst, not the rich people or the poor, but we, the people, all the people. In this brotherhood, America was born, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We began as 13 states along the Atlantic seaboard. We pushed across the Alleghenies, the Ohio River, the Mississippi, the last far range of the distant Rockies. We carried freedom with us. No aristocratic classes here, no kings, no nobles or princes, no state church, no courts, no parasites. No divine right of man to rule man. Here, humanity was making a clean, fresh start from scratch. Behind us, we left new states, chips off the old blocks welded together by freedom. Until finally we were one nation, a land of hope and opportunity that had arisen out of a skeptical world. A light was shining, freedom's light. From every country and every clime, men saw that light and turned their faces toward it. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. 
the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. As strangers to one another, we came and built a country, and the country built us into Americans. The sweat of the men of old nations was poured out to build anew. The sweat of our first settlers, the English, the Scotch, the Dutch, building the workshop of New England, of the Italian in the sulfur mines of Louisiana, of the Frenchmen and the Swiss in the vineyards of California and New York State, of the Dane, the Norwegian, the Swede, seeding the good earth to make the Midwest bloom with grain, of the Pole and the Welsh, of the Negro harvesting cotton in the hot southern sun, of the Spaniard, the first to roam the great southwest, of the Mexican in the oil fields of Texas and on the ranches of New Mexico, of the Greek and the Portuguese harvesting the crop the ocean here, of the German with his technical skill, of the Hungarian and the Russian, of the Irishman, the Slav, and the Chinese working side by side the sweat of Americans, and a great nation was built. of the men of all nations built America and the blood. For the blood of Americans has been freely shed. Five times in our history have we withstood the challenge to the idea that made our nation. The idea of equality for all men, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The idea that made us the people we are. Let's take a look at ourselves before we went into this war. Well, First of all, we're a working people. On the land, at the workbench, at a desk. And we're an inventive people. The lightning rod, cotton gin, the telegraph, the blessed anesthesia of ether, the rotary printing press, the telephone, electric welding, the incandescent lamp, the submarine, the steam turbine, the motor-driven airplane, the X-ray tube, the gyroscope compass, the sewing machine, television. All these and countless more bear witness to our inventiveness. And this inventiveness and enterprise, plus our hard-won democratic ideal of the greatest good for the greatest number, created for the average man the highest standard of living in the world. 32 and a half million registered automobiles, two-thirds of all the automobiles there are in the entire world. We demand the highest standards in sanitation, purity of food, medical care. Our hospitals are models for the world to copy. We want the best for the average man, woman, or child, particularly child.
We have reduced the hazard of being born. From then on, we protect, foster, and generally spoil the majority of our children. But it doesn't seem to hurt them much. They go to school, all kinds of schools. The kindergartens, public schools, private schools, trade schools, high schools, to 25,000 high schools, and to college. In the last war, 20% of all the men in the armed forces had been to high school or college. In this war, 63%. We're a great two weeks vacation people. We hunt and we fish up north, down south, back east, out west. When the season opens, we hunt and fish. And we're a sports loving people. scenery. We don't need passports, but sometimes we need alibis. We sleep by the road, we eat by the road. The foreigner is enchanted and amazed by what we like to put on our stomachs. joining people, we join clubs, fraternity, unions, federation. Shove a blanket us, we'll sign up. Radios, we have one in the living room. When you think of refreshment, think of the super dining room, sad, super sad, lot more sad, the bedroom, right, the bathroom, up. in our cars, and in case of acid indigestion, in our hands, and up our sleeves. Your cigarette tastes different lately? Music? We couldn't be without it. Yes, it's the biggest, but most important, it's the freest on Earth. Over 12,000 newspapers of all shades of opinion, books on every conceivable subject, and more than 6,000 different magazines, not counting the comics. Churches, we have every denomination on Earth. 60 million of us regularly attend, and no one dares tell us which one to go to. We elect our own neighbors to govern us. We believe in individual enterprise and opportunity for men and women alike. We make mistakes. We see the results. We correct the mistakes. We skyrocket into false prosperities and then plummet down into false, needless depressions. But. In spite of everything, we never lose our faith in the future. We believe in the future. 
We build for the future. Yes, we build for the future. And the future always catches up with us. Before we're done building, we've developed something new and have to start rebuilding. That's roughly the kind of people we are. Boastful, easygoing, sentimental, but underneath passionately dedicated to the ideal our forefathers passed on to us, the liberty and dignity of man. We've made great material progress, but spiritually we're still in the frontier days. Yet deep down within us, there is a great yearning for peace and goodwill toward men. Somehow we feel that if men turn their minds toward the fields of peace, as they have toward the fields of transportation, communication, or aviation, wars would soon be as old-fashioned as the horse and buggy days. We hate war. We know that in war, it's the common man who does the pain, the suffering, the dying. We bend over backwards to avoid it. But let our freedoms be endangered, and we'll pay and suffer and fight to the last man. That is the America. That is the way of living for which we fight today.